to examine the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, the if register, and the jump register in BB 0 0.2. Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and uh, get BB kicked off here by hitting Control K. Our clock is running at 8 hertz, and we are continuing to just run our infinite add program, um, which uh, today we're going to be counting with fives, a very good number to count by. The ALU in BB0.2 is really, really simple. It only performs two operations, adding and subtracting. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on inside of it. What we have is a 4-bit adder and a 4-bit adder, which uh, are custom-made components. And uh, we'll take a look inside of those here soon. We have this thing called an inverter. I uh, wasn't quite aware that uh, you can just take an inverter uh, here and specify that it's 8 bits and and that would perform the same thing so uh, I, I I really I really went whole hog with it and, and just uh, went in here and, and made inverters myself um, so yeah that's it is what it is uh, but whenever whenever the enable is high uh, the signal gets inverted whatever's in here this this allows us to uh, take the 8-bit uh, value coming in um, invert it and then uh, add it in a specific way to, to get subtraction uh, subtraction going on. Uh, this bus in enable again is, is really just a controlled buffer with with eight bits. It's so it, it is really amateurish, but it is what it is. So here we go with the ALU. We have uh, this um, uh, output enables. This is that bus bus enable. Uh, component to this this could just be one one inverter uh, controlled uh, one controlled buffer uh, connected to this enable line uh, but that controls what's going out onto our bus the add monitor that's just going out so that we can see what's in the ALU right now and it automatically is adding in the a input and the B input and again this B input goes into the inverter uh, so that we can perform subtraction when the subtract signal goes high. Um, so we invert and we also carry in to the addition. So let's actually look at the addition itself and go into one of these 4-bit adders. As you might be able to predict, the 4-bit adders are all comprised of 1-bit adders. We've made this ourselves, again, following along with Ben Eater's videos. And inside of the 1-bit adder is our logic um, so this is what it looks like in logism uh, go look at ben eater's videos um, and you know pause the video grab a screenshot and work this out for yourself uh, but but definitely go go look at ben eater's explanation it's a great one and um and and this is this is a one bit adder and it takes a and b and the carry in signal and then outputs um what the correct sum is and of course if there's a carry so then the four bit adder takes four one-bit adders and and puts them in sequence together so we add together the zero bits from each of a and b and we make sure that the carry out goes in and uh, goes into the carry in of the next bit which is the uh, the, the the ones the play or the rather the twos place of each of these and then the fours place and the eights place so we do this in sequence. So this is unsigned binary addition. Um, we're, we're not working with sign. We're not working with any of the other encodings that we can be using, uh, like binary um, uh, uh, binary coded decimal. Uh, we're, we're working in unsigned binary exclusively. So then you take one 4-bit adder and another 4-bit adder and chain them together. And therefore, we are now able to achieve a full, luxurious 8 bits of addition. In BB0.3, as you could imagine, we already have uh, arithmetic components inside of Logisim. We have addition, we have subtraction, multiplication, division. Uh, I just feel more comfortable building my own components when possible. Uh, but and, and really what we'll start relying on is building software to accomplish these things, like uh, the higher order mathematics, even something as, as simple as multiplication. We're not going to rely on a chip to do that, at least not for now. Um, but this is what we've done inside of the ALU uh, for now. It just adds or subtracts as, as you want it to and then outputs that um, whenever you want onto the bus. Um, so there's no accumulator register as you see in some microprocessor architectures. So as soon as the value of A and B updates, the addition, whatever is in the ALU, that updates as well. This makes the actual operation of adding very easy. We just put the two values in the A and B registers and then output the sum on, onto the bus. Um, so it's a pretty efficient operation in, in term, as far as operations go. 
So the jump register we've already touched on. It, it really is just a register, an 8-bit register, a regular 8-bit register like the other ones we've seen. Uh, this output here, um, the lower four bits of which go all the way over here and run to our program counter. And the program counter uh, has this D in the data in. This allows us to write to the program counter and point to the instruction that we want to jump to, the memory address that we want to jump to. Right now, we don't have any virtual addressing. There's no point when you have 16 bytes because it's really easy to address 16 bytes. You don't need any complicated schemas to do that. Um, so the jump register just has, uh, it, it kind of always has this 0110. That's our jump instruction code. And then uh, the actual value 0000. In, in our infinite add program, we do use the jump register and we use it to jump to zero, the zeroth step. So we're actually doing we're, every single loop of adding uh, the numbers. Uh, we add, we uh, output, we store, and then we jump. So that uh, this 60 instruction here is that very jump value, that, that jump instruction that we see stored here in, in the jump register. So uh, the last thing that we want to touch on in this video is this if register. The if register solves the problem of making this a Turing complete machine, which is to say we can take two values and compare them and then jump to one place or another depending on what what we want to actually um, depending on what we want to do so this allows us to conditionally jump which while we don't have very many bytes to do it in we do have a turing complete machine um, whatever you can fit into 16 bytes that is computable this machine can compute um, that's pretty exciting, um, and, and I don't really feel like demonstrating a lot of that. Um, again, BB0.3 will be a lot more fully featured, and, and I, I'd prefer to play around there. But let's dive into the if unit here and see how it works for now. Um, ben Eater hadn't released his series of videos on um, uh, conditional jumping yet by when I, had, uh, when I had made these or when I had recorded the first set of tour videos, but now he has, um, and he solves this uh, by uh, actually allowing the uh, carry out of the arithmetic logic unit and um, the, uh, adding in a register for detecting whether or not the re uh, result of a sum was zero, and we have um, we have the ability to store those values, the carry out and the uh, zero, um, if there's a, a add operation and, and this results in a zero, these get stored in their own registers and then are then used to manipulate what value we're looking at in the CPU. So it actually, geez, gone and changed the entire routing of uh, this lookup table to include all the different possibilities and iterations of uh, those flags being on or off. What we've done is something a lot more naive, but it's it's it definitely works. It it is very um, very inefficient in terms of the things that it uses up. It uses up a lot of time. It's very clunky, and most importantly, it uses up control lines and uh, possible assembly instructions. So we only have four bits of addressable space for our um, for our memory instruction for our uh, assembly instructions as well so we we only have 16 possible instructions and here we're sacrificing uh, we're sacrificing a couple to be able to to work with this if register so the general idea is we have our data in our bus in, and we have our bus out we have our uh, our you know enable to to uh, take the whatever is in here and put it out onto the bus we also have our comparison register and the candidate register. We, we have this, um, we're saying this is what we're comparing against. And this is the candidate. So the comparison is always going to be on the left and the candidate's always on the right. But it doesn't particularly matter which is which because um, um, we, we don't support greater than or less than. We only support equality. So we take each bit and split it up and we say, hey, the, the, the zero with bit, um, we XOR those together. So if they're the same thing, then the XOR will output a zero uh, because it's only if there's a difference between them will it uh, uh, will it uh, output a one. So then we invert that signal and we get um, the we, we get to say yes. In fact, uh, the zero with bit of each of these values is uh, is equal. So we we know that that's great. We feed that into an AND gate that's connected to each of these bits. And so then we just move down the line with the, the, the first bit, the second bit, the third bit, and so on. 
And if every single one of these is equal, then the AND gate will output a 1. And this will determine which of the values in our routing register is going to be outputted onto the bus. The way that I devised this to be as compact as possible is to say that the first, I believe it was the first four bits of the most significant bits of the routing register's value are if it's true. Actually, let's look that up real quick. <laughs> Is it here? No. Uh, yes. There we go. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, LDIR is the code that I chose. Load the if routing register with the RAM address specified. Truth routing first. So what this means for BB0.2 is that if you want to determine um, this, this allows you, it's going to jump at, at, no matter what happens. So you have to provide it with two addresses. The first four bit address that you provide it in the most significant bits is what happens when they are equal. Yes, it's true, they are equal. Then you're going to jump to that address in the program. And if they're not equal, then you'll jump to the least significant four bits and treat that as your address. Um, so with that in mind, you're able to do very simplistic things. Um, it, it really makes this uh, as painful as possible to use. Um, so we definitely get rid of that entirely. But this is my unique homebrewed solution. Um, so we, we can use one 8-reg to make this uh, work. And that's possible because we're using 4-bit addressing. Um, in BB0.3, we have eight bits of addressable space. So this, this does not work in the same way. And we go ahead and implement the same thing that um, Ben Eater does. And uh, at this point in the development of BB0.3, it, it, it is successful. We have successfully implemented um, the, the logic that modern day computers use and what Ben Eater demonstrates um, in his series of videos. So definitely don't take this as your template, but definitely take it as a uh, a thing you can do uh, to solve this problem. I'm curious as to what other ways you could solve this problem without using uh, flag registers. Um, but uh, in BB0.3, we just bite the bullet and go ahead and do it because that's, uh, that's, that's what makes the most sense, at least to me. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe if this is the content you like. We're uh, streaming along in our series of videos uh, explaining BB0.2 before jumping into BB0.3 and the build there and then incorporating uh, your ideas and suggestions into that build. And uh, then we'll really start to get our hands dirty into the world of computing. Um, for now, this is what has enabled us to be Turing complete. So we've crossed the threshold in this video from an interesting automata to something that's a little bit more than just interesting. It's actually uh, has the capability of being useful. Uh, so thank you, for, uh, thank you for your time and I hope you've enjoyed.